So, yeah, not nearly as cool as all the slow motion stuff before. You can see why we use slow motion now. It makes everything really cool. Um, we just came to Osaka mm -hmm. from Kyoto. We took a train. It was really simple because we have a bunch of cool apps that we use. And a lot of you guys have been asking what apps we use to travel the world with. Um, we're going to talk about specifically the ones that we're using here in Japan, but that also includes a lot of the ones that we use generally. So the way our apps work is, well, before we had data, we used to use a bunch of offline stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we have data. Um, so we're going to split our app recommendations up into two categories. First is the offline stuff. So I've got my phone here and I'm going to tell you all about the offline stuff that we use. The first offline app that we use the most is called Maps.me and basically it allows you to download a region, um, say a, a state in America or all of Japan. Yeah. Um, so be sure to download it ahead of time when you do have internet. <laughs> right. So that's the whole deal about offline apps is you basically have to preload all the content that you want before you are off of data. So with yeah. this one you can see I've got Japan, right? Um, but if I go over to like Mongolia, it's gonna be like, yo, brother, you need to download Mongolia. So that's it. But the cool thing is, is you can tag locations, you can get walking directions, mm -hmm. car directions, all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's probably the thing that we use the most for directions while offline. The second app that we use offline the most is Google Maps. Just by default, it seems to be one of the ones we go to. Personally, I yeah. really do not like the experience that Google Maps gives, especially offline. Um, I have things missing all the time. You can't drop pins while offline. Right. You barely ever get directions while offline. I get problems all the time. But <laughs> occasionally when maps.me isn't working, we can find something if we already saved offline the location that we're going to yeah. be with Google Maps. Or sometimes the pin we can't find in Maps.me, so right. we'll find it in Google Maps first and then bring it over to Maps.me. <laughs> yeah, so Maps.me is certainly our preferred, but yeah. if we can't find it in Maps.me, we'll use Google Maps. Yeah. Another great thing that we use when we're traveling all the time, or at least I do, I don't think Ashley does this much because I'm typically the one doing all the monies, is an app called Currency and then another app called Elk. With currency, you just type in whatever amount you're going to buy something for, uh, say it's 15.20 yen, and that comes out to about 13.897 USD. The cool thing about this is every time that you're connected to Wi-Fi and you open the app, it updates the currency. So unless there was a wild shift in the, uh, the value of a certain currency against your native currency, you're going to get pretty close to approximately how much it's going to be. Yeah, I'm always really just guessing, yeah. but that's a better way to be. The second currency type app that we use is Elk. Um, this one's an interesting one. It doesn't actually allow you to type in a specific amount. Mm. Instead, it's like a quick glance at approximately how much something mm. is. So you can see here at the very top, 100 Japanese yen is equal to 0.91 USD. Oh. If I wanted to, I could double tap on 100 and it would give me breakdowns by 10. So 110 uh, yen is 1.01, etc. But you're thinking, well, that only gives you 100 to 1000. The way you quickly navigate is by swiping yeah. horizontally. So left, right, left. I can do um, 1,000, 1,000K, uh, you know, or down to like, what's 10,000 yen? $91. Usually we're on the swipe left side. <laughs> we're, we're more down in this range. Yeah. What's 270 yen? That's about how much yeah. a lot of our metro tickets cost. Mm -hmm. And now we know. So you may not use it all the time, but it's a great way of quickly referencing approximately how much something is. The last app that we probably use the most while offline is Google Translate. Um, as you can see here, I've got English to Japanese selected at the moment. I could type good morning and it would return, um, well, what looks like oh, why, yo, but I know it's more said closer to Ohio, right? But if I want to say, okay, what's good night, I could just type good night, hit go. Well, that's hood good night. night. <laughs> hood night. Damn, son, we getting gangster up in here. Hood night. <laughs> Oyasumi. For the last two years we've been traveling without data and it's been doable but it's pretty difficult and when new situations arise where you have to change your plans it is very difficult um, getting a hold of someone while you're standing outside the door saying please let me into your Airbnb. Very difficult without data. But now thanks to our hashtag sponsor we have GigSky. It's what we use for data service around the world. It's a little sim that you pop into your phone and you're able to just top up your account with um, whatever you need, however much you need for however long you need. There's no contract, you just 
put in extra data whenever you need it. So Ashley is going to take us through all of the online apps that now we can use with hashtag sponsored GigSky. Link is in the description if you want to check them out. My favorite app that we use while we're online is called City Mapper. Yes. It is not available in a lot of places, and that is yeah. super unfortunate, but I think that they're developing the different areas and places. You can vote on the next city that they develop. Right. But this app is super amazing for Tokyo. Yes. Specifically, Tokyo is a giant city, yeah. hard to navigate, but with City Mapper, they make it super simple, super easy. You can just tell them where you want to go, um, what stations you're starting from, and they can give you the information about how you can walk there, how you can drive there, how you can um, get an Uber there, how you can get the metro there. You can save a route if you look it up ahead of time while you have data and you're going to be in some situation where right. you don't have data. You can save it by pressing this little star and easily find where you want to go from there. Another app that we use quite often is called Google Maps. You all probably know it. Right. Um, Google Maps makes it simple for us to actually look up things specific to what we want to do or right. if we want to eat something, such as right now we're very hungry and we want to go to a ramen shop. Mm -hmm. So I just put ramen in there. It'll find the ramen shops that are close in my area and make it super simple for us to go and have a bowl of ramen. Yeah, so while we're not super fans of the way that it does public transportation and that sort of thing, it's great for looking up a specific thing, especially around you that you're looking for. So we have found a few apps that are very specific to Japan, and they make it easy to find your way around Japan. One of them is called Japan Travel, and this is one I think I found by watching another YouTuber who lives in the area. Mm. Um, this gives you articles, different ideas of things to go and do um, food and drink, nature, oh, um, cool. culture, and then it also has a route um, section. And I've actually used this the most while in Japan. You can put your current location and then where you want to go. Say we want to go this one. <laughs> and search it and then it will let you know the easiest way to get there that may not have been the best choice ah yeah 13 minutes away not too far not it too also shabby. shows you the pricing um to expect so mm -hmm. it says 180 yen which is about a dollar 80 um but it really helps when going to the ticket machines to know how much you're going to spend yeah um, because that's the price that you put into the machine another one that is very similar to this app is called japan official japan official travel app that's their travel app it's organized really well they have really nice looking articles on here mm -hmm. it's not an app that i've used a ton because i've used the other one right but it also has the same option where you can route your um where you want to go and then um some travel tips and yeah, um, something that Josh had mentioned is that it has embassy information here that the other app doesn't. So if you have any issues or any questions, then you can look on this app and see um, if they have the information you're looking for. Those two apps feel like they're almost exactly the same app. For all I know, it's the same developer, but they are technically two separate apps and perhaps you find that one has different information than the other. Lastly, I had heard about this app called Hyperdia, specifically from someone who was taking the JR line, the uh, um, Japanese rail line. Yeah. It helps with finding those specific um, rails. So, say you have the tickets and you want to find the trains that you can use them for. On this app, you can search specifically for the mm. Japan Rail Pass, um, but then you also can do the normal searches that you want to do. Um, a lot of travelers when they come to Japan choose to go with the Japan Rail because it can be quite expensive mm -hmm. to travel around here if you are moving often. Um, for us that didn't work out that way so all these apps are very very helpful when using the public transportation and the metro. Mm -hmm. One specific claim to fame that this app has is that you can speak to it and tell it what you want to do. Um, haven't found it particularly useful but if you're having trouble like writing different Japanese words, you can just say the place that you want to go. So yeah. let's say you want to go from Kyoto to Osaka. I'd just be like, Kyoto to Osaka. It probably helps if you have a specific uh, place in mind, but it do does that. work and it's good. So you can speak in uh, English or Japanese. One thing about the Hyperdia app is that after 30 days, your trial runs out and you have to buy it. So if you're on vacation, mm. it, it's fine. We haven't used it at all while we've been here, so... But it is an option. It is an option, yeah. yeah. 
The last app that we have is one that we've already talked about. It's the Google Translate app. And the reason we say this for last is because there's a special function on here that you need data to use. We showed this in another video when we were talking about GigSky in a, in a big promo video we did with them. Mm -hmm. But this function requires data. So that's why we have it in the online section. If you look here, on the main page, you switch it from Japanese to English because you're gonna be translating something from Japanese to English. You don't know how to type it in Japanese because it's written in Japanese and you yeah. just need to know what it says in English. The way you do this is you hit the little camera button under where you would type text normally and then you point it at something that's written in Japanese and it says kimono rent. Yeah, that's, uh, pretty cool. that's pretty good, steadily on course, wearing rental, Okay, so it's it's a little bit sketch, but it works good enough. This works. And then let's see if it does handwriting. Uh, oh, okay. Call the month time. No. No, okay. <laughs> we have come along that issue where menus in restaurants have been yeah. handwritten and it hasn't been able to translate it very well. But when you do like a regular menu that's been yeah. printed, it works really well. Yeah, or signs, big signs that are, mm -hmm. are done in a standard looking text. If it's highly stylized, it doesn't work very well. Yeah, so now you know that it's kind of a disclaimer with mm -hmm. the app is that handwriting is not so great. So these are apps that we've been using in Japan, both offline and online. Uh, we found yeah. them super useful, some of them not so useful, but it is the full gamut of what we've been using. And also keep in mind that a lot of these apps you can use in so many other countries, not just Japan. There's three of them that are specific to Japan, right. but all the others you can use wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So Wayfam, I hope this was useful to you. I hope we encouraged you to get out there and travel today. We are going to go enjoy Osaka, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good night. Bye. Sayonara. No, there's a good one for good night. Hold on. Google. Good night. Oyasumi. 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 Oyasumi.